Hello and welcome to game number 12 of Michael Michael's Hidden Cup. We are in round two, or the quarterfinals, and today we get to look at uh, Chloe Swarbrick uh, in the red. A very nice colour, plain as the Incas. Free Llama right underneath the town centre there, versus uh, Winnie P, Winston Peters. He's playing as the Khmer, and we're going to jump right into it and see what happens. Instantly, we have a little bit of movement by Winnie. And some villagers and loom already queued. Very good to see. Um, and back over here. Double houses by Chloe. Very standard starts. So, if you can't remember. Oh. Not fast enough on the houses there, Winston Peters. Instantly housed. Um, not a smooth start for him, in fact. Um, if you can remember, Chloe Swarbrick actually astounded us in round one with a fantastic uh, Persian douche strategy. So... Very capable player, and we expect to see a lot of interesting things coming from uh, from her this game. Uh, Winnie P, on the other hand, went against the uh, enigmatic Ashley Bloomfield, who opted for what we call now the uh, Palisade Berry strategy, uh, which inevitably didn't pay off, which might have surprised a few people. Um, here, Winston Peters, a couple of idle villagers, bit of a slow start to be honest, so ultimately an unproven player having gone up against the uh, Palisade Berry strategy, so it's interesting to see what's going to happen this game against uh, Chloe Schwabach, who may be the, uh, the favoured candidate based on round one. Now, if you haven't been following along, this is on the map of Valley. There's a lovely uh, river in the centre of the map with lots and lots of deer and uh, fish. So any player that goes to the centre of the map early in the game will have a lot of extra food. Uh, these deers are collected very fast, especially if you're Mongols. We've seen that in a few previous games. Uh, the civs this time are no one's Mongols, but we do have the Inca. So the Inca are no one for blacksmith upgrades affecting their villages, which makes their feudal rush uh, with accompanying towers very strong. We actually saw an example of that, uh, I believe, by Todd Mueller in round one. And it'll be interesting to see if Chloe uh, Swarbrick is going to do a similar strategy to that, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's something she's going for, especially even just towering the centre, getting control of the hunt, and then dominating the game that way. Back in Winnie P, we're still going through our sheep, and we do not have a very high villager count. In fact, if we start looking at the villager count, we can already see a bit of a discrepancy going on here. Uh, Winnie P only on seven villagers, sending some to wood now. There's, uh, there's only five underneath the TC getting the berries, uh, getting the sheep. Khmer is a uh, civilization we haven't seen a lot of yet, um, and they've gone on. They've had a lot of changes, but I think that the most famous for is um, their farms. The villagers don't need to drop off the food from the farms. So they can make a farm wherever they want. No mill necessary, no town centre necessary, and they can also garrison inside their houses for protection. So. Um, that could come in a lot of handy if we end up do seeing the uh, Inca Tower Rush that we are low-key expecting. And the first ball already in for the Inca player. The second one, no doubt, coming in shortly. We'll see another villager go off to lure that one. There it goes. Whereas, looking back at Winnie P, uh, we, we have a boar down here, which may or not be scouted. We've definitely scouted this one. So at least we know where the boars are, but we're a little bit late uh, taking those boars in. Already gained minute five. Just looking at the maps here, here comes that boar, you can see uh, Chloe's got a little bit of a forward goal, but nothing crazy. Easy to wall this little gap here and this little gap here and work your way back to the side of the map. So a wall up to this wood line and then towards the TC and, and the same on this side could be very valuable and keep a lot of area completely safe from raiding. Uh, a little bit of potential to sneak around the back here. Uh, Winnie P might take advantage of later if they ever go into scouts and, and hit this wood line if this isn't walled. Uh, missing a goat. This goat was never found by one, uh, by Chloe. And I wonder if she actually scouted that and can see it. Yes, so she just hasn't bothered to, to pick it up yet. Back in uh, Winston Peters' basis, we're, we're getting these goats. We're putting them underneath the town centre. Slow and steady by Winnie P. Slow and steady. Not making any villagers right now. And this is the real problem. Uh, we're getting a uh, huge villager discrepancy between these players. Winston Peters currently on 11. And Chloe Swarbuck on 20 now. You can hear them 
jumping out of the TC very fast. Second board's down, and I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing there's a lot of villagers on stone already. I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing these villagers go to the center of the map, start collecting deer, or even further, and uh, start chucking towers on her opponent. Going up to the Feudal Age now, those two boars having a nice, quick Feudal Age uh, due to the, uh, the food coming from those two boars. So. You can see how necessary and valuable those boars really are. Uh, very important to collect your boars. And you can see this is what happens when you don't collect your boars. You have a meeting. Discussing why are the sheep gone? Where did the goat go? Here we go. We're off to get our first boar now. Very good Winston Peters. We're sold. We're solution. Solutions there. And we're going to the centre. And this is really good to see. I also like this. Going for the shorefish, uh, the shorefish first. Uh, shorefish are the fastest uh, food you can get in the game. Uh, villager collecting shorefish. Ironically, if you have a, a fishing boat do it, it's one of the slowest uh, food gather rates in the game. So it's good to see a, a heavy amount of villagers on this nearby shorefish. That's going to be really, really handy for Chloe. She's going to get a big food boost because of that. Winnie P, not quite at the 500 food necessary. In fact, idling the town centre... Which is not a good idea considering he's only on 11 villages. You should be going up to feudal age of at least 18 villages. And you can see the difference that these two uh, boards have made. And I suspect we're in for a bit of a quick game. Here comes the Incan Blacksmith. This is going to be used to research forging. And the first armor upgrades for these villages. They already have loom as you can see down here. Plus one, plus two. Um, and thankfully Winnie P also has Loom, he's going to need it because he's going to be fighting against these Incan villagers very soon. If we look at Chloe, she's got five villagers on stone as well. One villager on gold, I don't know about this, I don't think this is necessary. Uh, this villager could be on stone or wood to help even out that economy considering we're going for an Incan tower rush. And here it comes and we can switch to the fog of war. Where is the first tower going to be dropped? We never actually got a chance to talk about Winston Peter's map. But I uh, would like to mention the Ford Gold. Controlling this gold means that uh, Winnie P only actually has two side golds also out on the front. Very hard to defend. And an early wall between this and this tree would have meant that any attacks to the main gold would have had to go around these forests. And even walls towards the town centre from the forest would have made this a very safe place. But that has been completely denied by Chloe. I like the first tower going up in a place which is not being uh, seen by Winston Peters. That way when the second power, uh, tower goes up it can't be rushed down by villagers. But considering the villager difference is not much of a problem there. We're just going to start coming in with a lot of towers I think by Chloe. And let's see what kind of vision and scouting she has, because that's going to be very important. And where she's decided to put these towers, she doesn't actually know where the town centre is. She suspects it is there, I imagine. This is the main gold after all, and these are the berries. This tower is obviously going to deny this wood line for Chloe. She, does she see it going up? She sees some villagers. I don't know. I wonder if, I wonder if Winston Peters has noticed this. Unlikely here, yeah, putting it. She hasn't really scouted her main gold, which is why she's probably gone. Oh, he's probably gone over here. Get him a he's and she's mixed up with the Chloe and Winston. But here we go. Uh, here's some Incan villagers. These are very strong. Plus two, plus three. We already have forging coming, and this is probably the right move. Winston Peters is moving to Man at Arms, and the Man at Arms will be almost on equal footing with these uh, Incan villagers. Here comes another tower, of course. Man at Arms won't be on equal footing when towers in, are involved, and you can see how the towers are defending each other's bases here. That's perfect positioning by Chloe, and she's really nailed uh, how these towers are coming in. In fact, Winston Peters is probably surprised when they eventually find uh, another tower up here. What's the plan here? Winston Peters is under a lot of pressure. He doesn't know quite what to do. What he does need to do is send his own villagers to stone, perhaps. This is a great wall. This is a good good idea. You've got to stop these villagers coming forward and towering you. Um, some villagers could go inside the town centre right now, get some free damage and free hits on these Incan villagers. But I understand there's a lot going on right now. We really do need to stop these villagers from just walking through the base and putting towers every which way. This uh, scout cavalry is not going to do a lot and it's slightly going to get taken out by this tower. The next thing Chloe needs to do is, yes, walk this way. She needs to control this gold mine, this stone, and this can all be done by one or two towers, just bam, bam, in the middle. It's very unlucky placement and map generation by Winston Peters there. This wall's going up, but there's too many villagers to make this wall, and ultimately now, what is this wall achieving? There needs to be one on both sides. 
It's a little bit too late for this side, I think. Yes, a nice Khmer France that we planned, and should probably be deleted and repositioned somewhere else, I'd imagine. Here comes another tower. It's not looking good. Not looking good at all for Winston Peters. There's been very little in the way of having uh, finding a way to deal with these Incan Towers. We might get a little bit of a villager brawl here, but hopefully not for Winston Peters' sake, because these villagers will not win these, these purple, weak, only loom villagers. These Incan villagers are so much stronger. And up comes another tower. Really nailing in the coffin, putting some stone walls around the base of the towers here. Chloe Swarbrick uh, making sure that these are never going to get rushed down. Uh, so not only putting them within range of each other, but also putting stone walls around. And we're going to bash down this barracks, and of course we can. Oh, we could, we could go back and do it. You probably want to do that before too many men at arms come out. Um, these spears are going to try hit down this tower. That's not. These aren't the right units for this. You should use men at arms. And also, there's a little bit of damage coming on from this side, so microing this spearman around the other side of the tower might be good. Um, and it's at this point where you have enough towers, I'd really like to see uh, Fletching come in for uh, Chloe Swarbrick. Swarbrick. Fletching is a, is a research you do at the blacksmith that she has over here, which gives you plus one range and plus one attack to your towers, and all your archers and things like that. So it's very valuable for anything that fires arrows, and it's definitely the next, the next step. Chloe will be quickly realizing that this is the last two stones and golds that Winnie actually has access to. And she's just going to go really aggressive, really aggressive, these towers. Uh, Winston's kind of closed himself in here and needed a gate. This is probably exactly what Chloe really wants. Uh, and this tower will just slowly pick all these villagers off if uh, Winston doesn't perhaps delete one of these walls and get them out of there. But to be fair, it looks like there's already too much damage has happened. These villagers on the wood line slowly taking hits, getting picked off, getting distracted. They'll get bored. They'll come back to the wood line, try to hit to get, uh, try to collect more wood and get hit by more arrows, and eventually die if they're not tended to. Another tower coming up on this tiny wood line. It's a very convincing play by Chloe once again. First with the Persian douche in round one, and now with a classical Incan tower rush, complete using the uh, center, I might I add, behind this, just to make sure that. Uh, still has the town centre running, still adding economy to this whilst this is happening. So Chloe currently on 31 villages and Winston Peters uh, is only on 11 vill villages too. I believe that's... I'm not sure if... I don't think he's actually lost villages. I think he's just failed to make any because there's no food income for winning uh, Winston Peters at all. Which is a real shame to see. Uh, Winston Peters should have really sent a lot of their uh, villages maybe off to the left hidden up here on the right, kill some of this hunt, and then replace it with those lovely Khmer farms that don't need drop-off points. And here come those Incan villagers, getting the melee hits off, starting to cause a lot of trouble, and I think Winston Peters, he knows the writing's on the wall, something is set in there, but it's been um, obfuscated from the uh, chat filter, maybe it was something nasty, who knows. It was probably something very benign, because um, the chat filter's a bit aggressive. Here we go, a lot of Incan villagers just taking them all out. Not a lot that Winston Peters can do at this stage. All these villagers are going to go down and uh, re -read. And still making villagers back at home, building walls, doing all the right stuff. Um, still still got the villagers on stone. Let me build my naughty shaped fences. Ah, I see. Now I am... I think these are meant to be two balls. And uh, maybe this is a shark of some description. Thank you, Winston Peters. Uh, I agree. Very artful. Very artful. Um, I like the addition of a lumber camp here. And I reckon lots of lumber camps would have been quite cool to give it like a hairy appearance. Because, um, you know, they're quite long and sticky. Could have been kind of interesting in that respect. Um, regarding the tip, more bulbous. But I suppose you did have Chloe Swarbrick's, uh towers to contend so that, that is fair, I understand. These villagers out on the hill, they're not going to be doing anything anytime soon. This mining camp never got built, and uh, this is good to see. Um, I wonder how much that was used. We kind of missed that. It doesn't look like it was used a whole bunch because there's still a lot of deer nearby, but keeping villagers out here might have been a good uh, play for Winston Peters to try to keep that food income coming in and try to keep those villagers popping out. That was probably the real problem here. We're going to start a new penis and balls up here, I think, is the plan. 
But the wolves have other ideas, and so do these villagers. They're heading away. This is the penultimate villager for Winnie P. And the final villager right there. Let's see if Chloe Swire. Oh, no. Just going to return. Maybe Winston Peters will get a chance. Oh, no. no he's going back. He's going back. What are we doing here? I think it's another dick, I think. It's very rectangular at this stage. Chloe Swarbuck is not amused. What is she? Just trying to make it hard. <laughs> Last village and there's not enough food to make one more for Winston Peters, so uh, yeah. No more uh, Palisade cock and balls today, I, I assume. It's good to see, it's good for people to take the game and you know use it as an art form. Uh, but speaking of art form, the Ink and Tower Rush, very well executed, very fast, very neat. Very clean and, and right onto the main gold of uh, Winston Peters, completely sealing the fate. So at this stage there's nothing Winnie P can do. We might just fast forward and uh, find out I help. <laughs> Chloe might uh, be finishing off that girthy girthy build the naughty word. What naughty word? Was there a naughty word? Alright, oh, try to build the penis and it keeps... Uh, we <laughs> appreciate the support for the bit. Uh, very good, very good to see. Anything for the crusher of fruit. It seems like maybe uh, Winston Peters's uh, nemesis in round one, the, the fruits meme. Uh, maybe Winston Peters and Ashley Bloomfield were in cahoots. But I do like this. I like the girth actually that Chloe added. That was important. We're going for a second town centre here. Uh, the Inca player did get to the castle age in the end. Um, so that's nice. Eventually these towers will kill this uh, town centre. Um, eventually, and, and thus there won't have to be a GG from Winston Peters. Um, Winston Peters refusing to GG. Um, interesting. And there it goes. Wow! I dare say, Winston Peters, not really the favoured person to go into the match, considering the performance against Ashley Bloomfield, so this is somewhat expected, but again, Chloe Swarbrick showing us that she knows how to play, she knows the meta, she knows what civs to pick, and she's making uh, smart choices with her civilizations and, and how she's playing, so really looking forward to seeing her going into the semi-finals um, against the uh, other semi-finalists. And unfortunately, Winston Peters, honestly, if you'd made more villages, you could have made way more cock and ball palisade walls. I'm actually disappointed in that in that performance. You could have had at least five on the field before you got uh, before you had to resign. Um, so slightly disappointed there. If, if that's your goal, you did your goal per poorly, um, and hopefully you'll do better next time in the next tournament. But thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed that, very good demonstration of an ink and trash and how to do it, early balls, straight to the centre, extra food, keep the economy running, and uh, first tower on the gold but out of sight, so they don't see it going up, by the time you get your second tower up they defend each other. Very well done by Chloe Schwabach. Uh, we'll have a quick look at the statistics I suppose, but there's probably not a lot to see here, Villager higher 13, that was the real downfall of uh, Winston Peters, not enough food, not enough balls, not enough villagers in general, and of course... Um, uh, military as well, standard stuff. Not a lot of military in this game. Ink and Tower Rush on Indian's villages. In the economy, you can see some clear differences there. Um, very good. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.